Good morning to all. I'm Smitra, working as an associate professor in Tripoli Department of R&D Engineering College. And this semester, I'm handling microprocessor and microcontroller for third year Tripoli students. Now, in this video, I'm going to uh, explain about um, how a keyboard can be getting interfaced with the help of a microcontroller. So, which is coming in fifth unit, along with uh, some other simple programs using 8051 and some appliances control like washing machine and some motor control like stepper motor, servo motor and all. So let me explain about how a keyboard can be getting interface with the help of a microcontroller in this lecture. So now, uh, before going to know about uh, interfacing phenomenon, first uh, we have to know uh, a general concepts of how the keyboard can be and how in what form it can be getting interfaced with the microcontroller. So we all know that keyboard is one form of input devices through which we can able to give the inputs through a processor. And then uh, suppose if you want to uh, have uh, 16 key inputs, then if you are going for um, each key has been represented by a single input line, then for interfacing your keyboard, which is having 16 pins, you are in need of uh, a port, which is said to have a 16 pins. And we all know that uh, regarding 8051, we have only four ports, that to each port is of eight bit wide so totally 32 port pins are available for interfacing your uh, input and output devices so if you are going to interface a keyboard with 16 key inputs then you need some 16 port pins for interfacing this keyboard alone left out with only 16 more pins for getting interface with any other devices like cd cd uh, cd drive floppy disk drive printers etc etc so uh, it is not advisable to go with the keyboard interfacing uh, meaning that each and every key has been represented by a single input line. So instead of going in that manner, if you are going for a matrix representation of a keyboard, then it is a possible. There is a possibility for us to go with reduced number of pins. For example, if you are going to uh, have a keyboard in four cross four matrix, then uh, with that matrix representation, uh, we can able to interface sixteen input pins with only eight port pins. So the remaining eight port pins can be able to interface or can be able to utilize for interfacing some other uh, devices. Maybe it may be a uh, input or an output device. So this is a necessity for going for a matrix representation of a keyboard, right? So, and uh, also here we are going to consider an expat. Expat means we have the numeral starting from zero to nine followed by A, F, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, that's why it is known as expert representation of a keyboard. And for our explanation, I'm going to consider a four cross four matrix. So four cross four matrix means it is having four rows and four columns. So it is having four rows and four columns. Uh, so you are in need of two ports to getting connected or getting interfaced with the microcontroller. So we know that there exists four different ports in a microcontroller. So it's up to our wish to connect uh, or to select any two ports connecting to the rows and the column. So regarding this four cross four matrix, there exists 16 switches starting from zero to nine followed by ABE. A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And all the four rows are getting connected to port one. In this example, I have taken port one or getting connected to the port one pins or getting connected to the four rows and port two pins are getting connected to the columns. And moreover, uh, only four pins are required for in getting connected to the rows and the columns. That too, a least significant bits, leaving the most significant bits of port one and port two uh, to be used for some other interfacing devices. Okay, so now uh, here we have considered only the least significant bits of port one and port two for getting connected to uh, the rows and columns of your four cross four matrix. Okay, and wherever we have an intersection of rows and columns, there we have connected the switches. So by pressing the switch only, we can able to give the inputs through the uh, keypad. Okay, so initially. Uh, we need to assign certain values for the port pins getting connected to the rows and columns. Already we know that uh, in case of 8051 microcontroller, in order to uh, make that port to act as an input, uh, then we need to write a one to the latch of the respective port. Similarly, if you want to make the port to act as an output, we need to write zero to the latch of that respective port. So now uh, in case of this keyboard interfacing, the port one is connected to the rows and it should be treated as an output port. And similarly, the port two is connected to the column of the 
keyboard matrix which has to be considered as an input port so if it is an input port we need to write one to the latches and then if it is an output port we need to write zeros to the latches so how we can able to write zeros and ones to port one and port two means simply by grounding the rows grounding the rows and then by connecting the columns to a VCC, then we can able to get zeros over the port 1 pins and 1 over the port 2 pins. So this is how to get uh, zeros and 1s over the port pins of 1 and 2. So the next diagram will clearly show you how it is possible to get the values of zeros and 1s for the port which is going to act as an output and for the port which is going to act as an input. Okay, so this can be obtained by just grounding the four rows and this can be obtained by just connecting all the columns to the VCC. Okay, this is the initial representation how the matrix keyboard will be getting connected to the microcontroller. So now uh, there exist three different steps uh, in which the microcontroller able to uh, uh, interface with your matrix keyboard. The first step in the uh, process is that a controller has to identify whether any key has been pressed. This is the first step. And second step, after identifying some keys has been pressed, it has to identify which key, that is which row is responsible to have such a key pressed. And then after identifying the row, it has to check which key in that row is causing a change in the value, right? So these are the three steps getting involved in the processing of interfacing 8051 with a controller. So as I told you already, initially all the values of the columns, that is the port 2 pin values will be 1, 1, 1, 1. Suppose if you have pressed any key over any row, then that corresponding column value will be getting changed to zero. How this is happening means if I'm, for example, consider I'm pressing the key six. If I'm pressing the key six, then there occurs a short circuit. And since the column has been connected to the VCC, mm -hmm. and if you are coming across a short circuit over there, and then obviously that column will be alone having a value zero. Whereas the remaining columns will be giving one since there exists no switches in the closed condition. Okay. So the first step for the microcontroller to identify whether any key has been pressed or not is that while checking the values of the port two, if there is any other value apart from 1111, it is indicating that any some of the key has been pressed in the key pair. Okay. So if the column values is other than 1111, it indicates that some of the key in the keypad has been pressed. Then after identifying this, the controller will allow a delay for debouncing. Uh, we all know that what is bouncing. So if you have a transition by means of pressing a key, if you have a transition, the transition never attains uh, immediately from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. It will say take some time that uh, it is in the form of some glitches and all right so the controller has to allow some time for the debouncing to occur and then it should make ensure that the logic has been really changed to uh, one or zero okay so after identifying uh, some values are getting changed by means of pressing some switches it has to allow a period for debouncing to occur and then it ensure that still if we have a change in the values other than 1111 then it will confirm that some key has been pressed and then it will go on identifying which row is responsible for that change to occur that can be done by making one row at a logic zero keeping the remaining rows at a logic one so by assigning one row at a logic zero and then by checking the values of the columns, then it will identify whether any key as in that row has been pressed or not, right? For example, if I'm making D0 as zero, since no key has been pressed in that column, I'll be getting 1111 in my column values. And then uh, by making D1 as zero and the remaining four val remaining three values as one, and then I'll be getting a zero value over here. Since this is the row where we where this key six has been pressed. So by this, the control identify the row which is responsible for the change in the occurrence of uh, values in the columns. By keep on changing the values of the rows at a logic zero, we can able to identify which row is responsible. Then how to identify which key in that row means for that the controller will be using a logic called RRC. RRC is nothing but rotate, write the contents of the accumulator through the carry. So now consider
uh, consider i'll be uh, rotating the contents of uh, i'll be rotating the contents of the accumulator through right through the carry like this then the values will be shifted like this consider this is the carry and after rotating the contents right through carry the carry flag status will be checked if the carry flag value is zero then it indicates that corresponding key in that row has been pressed okay so now for the first time if i am transferring this one will be going over there and this one will be coming over here and this zero will be coming over there so now by checking the status of the carry flag it is having one only so uh, uh, it it means that no key in that column has been pressed and while transferring the contents that is while rotating the contents right for the next time what will happen already this one was there right and now this one will be coming over here and this zero will be coming over here and now also the carry flag will be one only indicating that no key has been pressed by ro rotating the contents right through the carry for the third time this zero will be coming over to the carry flag so now my carry flag is zero so which indicates that the key in that column that is exactly the six is the key has been pressed which is responsible for coming over a zero over here so this is how the microcontroller will identify some key has been pressed in that particular row so in my next video i'll be explaining you how to uh, write a program using 8051 to identify or to interface the matrix keyboard okay thank you all